Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Does streaming hear me? Yes. All right. We've got that covered. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Philip. You might know me. You might not. For those of you who don't, I'm Philip Malikovic. Um, I'm a member of, board member of Wikimedia Serbia and Wikipedia and Education User Group, two entities that have organized this conference and that will continue doing so in the next several days. And I want to welcome you to this EduWiki Conference 2023. Um, we have a bunch of stuff prepared for you in this first hour and a half, so I'm not going to go too long. I just wanted to um, use this opportunity to, as a, um, uh, yes, I have a slide. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to use this opportunity to welcome you um, on behalf of both uh, affiliates, on, on behalf of the user group and Wikimedia Serbia. We've worked tirelessly over the past several months, even years, one might say, um, to make this happen. So I'm really glad to have you all here because without you, this conference means nothing. Um, so yeah, we've had, we have about 100 people here. Yes. Um, we have a hundred, about 100 people here and some of the people, the guests that were supposed to be here were not able to come here because of some administrative reasons and we're very sorry for that. Uh, hopefully they can follow us on, on, on the stream. And hopefully there are a lot of people watching the stream either right now or after the fact. Um, because we wanted to make sure that this, what, we, what happens here stays for the long run because we believe that this conference will be impactful and uh, it just makes sense. So yeah, uh, I don't want to um, take too much time. Uh, I just wanted to say hello, to open this formally um, and to sort of uh, give it to Sukaina um, who is going to talk about uh, friendly space stuff. Um, very important, so that's why we start with that, and then we'll move on with the program. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sukaina, and I'm here to remind you of the friendly space policy. As you can all see that the organizing team is committed to provide a harassment-free experience for everyone. Regarding, regardless of their race, age, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, gender, and political affiliation, and the list goes on, there is a list of do's and don'ts that you should all respect, and any violation of the rule might lead to sanction. And that's not something we want to <laughs> go through, so kindly respect the rules. Um, the list of do's and don'ts is available on many flyers in the conference rooms, it's here. You can also scan, scan the QR code and you will have access to the list of the rules. And um, something also to keep, it, to keep in mind is users or like participants with red, excuse me, participants with uh, red land yards do not like to get pictured. So kindly keep that in mind when taking pictures. Something also to keep in mind is please when talking to any participant, keep in mind their respected names that they prefer. Um, if you have any issues or would like to report any case or anything, please feel free to reach out to me, Silish, Philip. We are the Trust and Safety team members. You can easily identify us by the green badge. So it says Trust and Safety team members. There is also another way to reach out to us. It's through this email that is shown on the slide. You can also reach out to us or to Philip specifically using this phone number shown in the slide. I wish you all a safe and fruitful conference and um, welcome again. Thank you. So good morning everyone from me as well. Um, I want to welcome you all to the EduWiki Conference 2023 um, on behalf of Wikimedia Serbia Okay, yeah, I forgot that to do, to do this for myself. Um, so uh, we are really happy to see you all here, so to see all familiar faces it, and to meet you in person. And we are looking forward to hearing from you and listening to you and learning from you in the next three days. 
Um, I truly hope also to, uh, for you to enjoy this amazing program and um, that was prepared by the program committee. So uh, many thanks to, to them for putting so much effort uh, in it and for you uh, who submitted your presentations and um, who are willing to share your experience uh, from your affiliate or your community. Um, also, uh, I want to uh, uh, say uh, thank to uh, the Wikipedia and Education User Group, uh, our partner in crime, um, who made this uh, event possible uh, and working. It, it was really a blast working with them. Uh, and of course, uh, to the Wikimedia Foundation, who supported us with the um, uh, grant, and not only for or with the grant, but also support in terms of event management and consultations, and to uh, make this event. And uh, the, the best one. <laughs> um, unfortunately, as Philip mentioned, not everything went smoothly as we wanted to, as we planned. So we faced a lot of challenges in terms of um, some participants getting visas. And I want to say really uh, to apologize for this stressful process um, for you who got the visa uh, at the late moment, but also for uh, those participants who are not uh, here with us today. But um, to make this less stressful and less painful for them, we created the streaming links uh, that are sent uh, via Telegram group so you can share um, them with anyone, of course, not just the participants who applied for the uh, EduWiki conference. Uh, and I also shared it um, via mailing list, so you can also uh, forward it uh, to anyone interested. Um, I'll just remind the speakers uh, to use the microphone for the streaming uh, and to remind you that only sessions in Atrium and Forum uh, will be uh, recorded. Uh, in Belgrade Room, uh, we won't record any because uh, this is going to be focused on the workshops. And right now, I remember that I didn't explain the, the venue first. Uh, so you can see here the layout of the room. Uh, everything is happening in the ground floor. Uh, so this is the, the main uh, um, room, uh, atrium, uh, and we will have plenary sessions here and also some individual sessions. Um, we'll have forum. It's on my right and on your left side. Uh, and uh, Belgrade room, which is near the receptions, you can see the roll up. Uh, if you cannot find it, please reach out to us. Um, as for the venue, you can use also and I uh, hope you use the restaurant this morning, uh, but uh, also terrace and balcony if you want some fresh air and if, if, you, if you want to chill and um, hang out with people uh, um, in the next three days. Um, I will also uh, remind you, um, as uh, Philip mentioned, uh, that uh, we will have people who are not, um, who don't feel comfortable uh, being photographed, so they will have this red lanyard. Please pay attention uh, to it if you are ph photographing them. And also, uh, we will have, we do have uh, volunteers with white, white lanyards, so you can ask them for help. Um, they will be available in the rooms, but also uh, at the info desk, which is the desk where you registered for the uh, event. Um, as for the, um, uh, I'll, I just uh, want to mention that we will have this quiet table uh, in the restaurant. So if you don't want to talk, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you can use this table and just not talk and enjoy your lunch. Um, and uh, for the city tour, um, uh, you probably noticed that we are going to, um, uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, I'll give you more information uh, on the mailing list. Uh, but uh, bear in mind that in the restaurant, we will also have this room without music if you want to talk more with your uh, fellow colleagues um, and, you know, um, maybe don't, you don't enjoy music as much. Um, we do have our team from the Wikimedia Serbia, so um, Nevena, Nebojša, uh, Gorana and Bojan. You all know Bojan, right? <laughs> so they are also here to help with anything uh, and to, uh, if you want to reach out to us, you can do that uh, at the space. You can also contact us uh, on the mailing list, on the Telegram group. You can find some information on the matter as well. So just feel free to, to enjoy your stay here in Belgrade and your stay, uh, stay at the conference. And um, I hope it would be really nice to you. Um, so. 
Without further ado, um, I want to announce our next uh, speaker. Um, this is Nebojša Shabasilevic. Uh, he's um, uh, director of Foundation Petlia, uh, and uh, we, um, which is actually uh, formed in 2017. So Petlia is the foundation with the goal of uh, making accessible programming to everyone who are interested uh, interested in it. Uh, so children, uh, students, um, uh, enthusiasts. Um, uh, so everyone who wants to acquire new skills uh, in their professional development. And similar to our movement, uh, they strive to make these educational materials free um, to a wide spectrum of people. So um, thank you, Nebojša, for coming here. Thank you. And um, I'll give you the word so you can tell us more about your work. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure to me to be among so many people who are united in the belief that knowledge should be free, accessible and open to all. Uh, as you already heard, uh, I am director of the Loop Foundation and uh, we develop a lot of uh, open educational resources and uh, most of them are related with support uh, to uh, computing subjects in formal education in primary and secondary school. And what is also important to emphasize is that uh, for um, different our educational activities, training, summer schools or whatever, uh, we always try to use educational resources as a foundation. So th these resources then uh, left, left for possible future, future, future use and you can find on our website peta.org many, many uh, such resources. Unfortunately, many of them are on Serbian, few of them are on English and I hope in the future more of those resources uh, will, be, uh, will be in English. And uh, uh, since this topic of supporting uh, computing in, in schools is, uh, is, is, is very important. Uh, um, I, I will start from uh, some years ago, um, even before, uh, uh, before formal, formal establishment of our organization, uh, uh, we had an idea that uh, students, young students in school, in primary school, uh, should learn to code. And, uh, Maybe you can remember these years, 2014, 15, 16, 17, there is a lot of, uh, of things regarding uh, uh, learning to code with block-based programming, etc. Uh, uh, but our idea uh, was to try to uh, move forward and to, uh, in a similar way, uh, 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 learn, learn students to, to code in text or programming, primary, primary, primary in Python. Uh, and in 2017, uh, government uh, decided to introduce computing as an obligatory subject in primary schools, and then government, IT industry, and organization like our uh, had common goal to make this decision successful, to make computing in school successful, and we all cooperated very well. In, uh, there was strong, uh, strong support from the industry, and there is a very um, good cooperation with policymakers how to make all that happen. Uh, uh, Loop Foundation uh, made uh, very important open educational resources that support uh, the, the, the new subjects if there is very short time for implementation and there was no, no, no time for uh, regular, regular textbooks. Uh, and also we provided uh, a lot uh, of trainings, etc. But I, I, I want to say here also that besides uh, the pure support uh, for, for, for the implementation, uh, those educational resources had, uh, uh, had one more, one more very important role that they um, um, demonstrate how new method of learning to code 
is feasible. And this is very important role of open education resources. Generally, uh, I would like to say that uh, when you propose some change in education and you have some idea uh, or, or new outcomes, new topics, new subjects, it is important to make online course that specifically demonstrate what you think. If you just put some outcomes, put some topics on the table, it is not enough. Even if you have good idea how it will be implemented, other people will not understand it in the same way. And they may not to make right decision or make right decision but not implement it in the right way. So it is very important to show it to walk the walk when you propose something in the in, in the educational system it is and lesson we, uh, we we learned in in, in a good way uh, and uh, now I, I would like to um, mention um, that uh, open in open educational resources is not so clear as open in open source for instance uh, uh, when you publish PDFs as open educational resources so what this means from the perspective of open source, it is like binary file, it is not source. So, uh, uh, nobody will say it is open source because you cannot easily modify it. You, you, you don't have the version of this content that creator use and you cannot easily contribute to it. So, uh, we are trying also to, to be truly open or as open as possible there is no strict threshold for truly open to make to, to not not just to mm, put uh, some permissive license to, uh, on our content it is uh, 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 something we do uh, of course but also to remove as much as possible or technical barriers so, so uh, our uh, educational resources are in GitHub repositories, uh, open with permissive licenses. Uh, source code is in lightweight markup, so um, uh, restructured text, markdown, whatever. Uh, and we use fully open source tools to build. Static version of core or non online course is accessible of, on GitHub pages. And also, even more, we recognize that many schools use learning management systems like Moodle. And it's not so easy just to integrate something like that in the Moodle. And in our tool chain, uh, based on other open source products and with, with some our code, uh, we provided way to build SCORM packages that can be uh, 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 that can be integrated in Moodle and also some Moodle backup. So, what is important? Why I'm talking all, all about it? Uh, you can, um, you you have to put a lot of effort to make your open data, open educational resources, open source really open, and we do that uh, all the time. Uh, also. Mm, uh, when we are talking about open, and we are talking about source, uh, not only open source of code, but source of information, uh, uh, it is very important to mention uh, open data. And it is, when you go from the education perspective, it is very related with the concept of critical thinking. Why? Because critical thinking always uh, search for authentic source and double check any fact, any conclusion uh, that is not uh, obviously um, trustful, uh, uh, double check from some authentic source. And now we have a lot of open data all, all around uh, us and we need to educate people how to check conclusion and make conclusions from the, from the open data. Uh, and uh, many of our uh, uh, courses 
online courses, open education resources, are focused uh, on, uh, on that area. So, in this short introduction to our organization and um, uh, values we share, um, I, I think that I have put some, some key focuses of what openness means for us and how we, um, and I think that it is pretty aligned with, with, your, with your values, uh, try to fight for uh, better open resources all around us. Thank you very much, and I wish you a pleasant conference. Okay, hi everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Bukola James, and I'm a member of the Wikipedia Plus Education User Group, and I'm from Nigeria. So, and this also happens to be my first international in-person meetup with Wikimedia, and so I'm like, oh. <laughs> Okay, so I'll be leading the Make a New Friend activity, and it promises to be interesting. Wow. <laughs> okay, so this is how we are going to go about this. It's titled Introduction at One. So it's not an edit at one, and you don't need to create a list of articles. But yes, you will be making a list of new friends at the end of this activity. So I would like all of you to kindly stand on your feet. Thank you. And where is Bojan? I need pen and papers. What do you need? Pen and papers. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry to keep you standing, but please, I would like to get pen and papers for everyone in the room. Oh, no, it's paper, because yes, they'll be doing a lot of sketches. <laughs> oh, yes, or oh, if you have your notes, parts, you can just... <laughs> yeah. Please kindly pick one paper, one sheet of paper, and then get a pen. No, yeah. If someone needs additional pens, pen, paper. You don't have to leave where you are standing. Just pick a pen and a paper. Okay. Okay, so do we all have our pen and paper? Okay. Okay, fine. So why are you standing with your pen and paper on your seats? You can just keep standing. Uh, please kindly walk six feet away from where you're standing and meet somebody. Yes, six feet or four feet. Meet somebody like that you've not have any formal discussion with. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so you just have to meet them, but you don't have to talk. Yeah, please just face the person. You're not facing anybody, Frank. <laughs> okay, nice. So now what you have to do is... Make a sketch of that person that you're facing. A facial sketch. <laughs> yes, you have to face someone. Please pick a partner, anybody. <laughs> okay, if, if you're not comfortable making a facial sketch, then you can... Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so you make a facial sketch of the person that you're facing and uh, it doesn't have to take too much of your time just try to make a facial sketch 
So once you're done, kindly exchange your paper with your partner and let them evaluate your sketch. Sketch, kindly exchange your sketch with your partner. Oh. <laughs> okay, so once you've done the sketch and you've exchanged the sketches, then let your partner evaluate what you have done. And if, based on the evaluation you're getting from your partner, you have to now determine whether you are going to give that person your complimentary card. Or you're going to like just exchange your social media handles. And now uh, your, your numbers of um, connection is determined by the numbers of sketches of different people in this room that you can make. So you are good to go and the time starts now. Oh, nice. I think you deserve a card. <laughs>
Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for the connections you've made and I hope this you find this activity very interesting and I hope that you are also able to sustain this. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much for uh, accepting to do to carry out this activity because initially I felt like it would not interest anyone <laughs> to get engage but yes i love that we are able to connect i love that we are I'm able to like put smiles on our faces and i hope that we would uh try to sustain this connection by getting an exchange of our complimentary cards business cards or like just getting the social media handle of that person so thank you so much and do enjoy the rest of the conference Hello, everyone. Let me make this microphone work here. I would like to also welcome everyone. I am Leanna Davis. I'm the chair of the Wikipedia and Education User Group, and I am so happy to see all of your smiling faces here today. Um, it is my especially great honor to introduce our second keynote speaker, Shani, who I believe all of you know, but if you don't, you will get to know her today as she walks us through reimagining the future of Wiki and education. Shani is an educator specializing in technology and learning, a lecturer, a researcher, and a free and open knowledge advocate. She joined our Wikimedia movement in 2011 and immediately started work in both the education space and the glam space. And I had the honor of meeting her shortly thereafter and have appreciated working with her ever since. In 2013, she is one of us. She opened one of the first four credit courses in the world dedicated to Wikipedia and later the first four credit course in the world to feature Wikidata. Her academic courses focus on missing medical content as well as knowledge gaps, highlighting and creating articles and Wikidata items from the women in red lists. She has not only been practicing implementing Wikipedia into the educational and academic curricula, sponsoring countless others to do the same, but has also written peer-reviewed academic articles about the topic, including one that she co-authored with me and Philip and Joao um, that came out earlier this year that you should all read about our global Wikipedia education program. She recently finished her PhD, which she should get an extra round of applause for. <laughs> And the focus of her PhD is on the semantic web as a learning platform, focusing on wiki data as a case study. And she now pursues a postdoc exploring linked open data in the context of digital humanities. And she's also a great keynote speaker because in 2018, she served as the founding chair of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. Um, and she served in that role till she joined the Wikimedia Foundation's Board of Trustees. And then Philip and I have uh, taken over the, the user group chairship since then. Um, but she was much better than either of us. Um, and she currently serves as vice chair of the board of the Wikimedia Foundation. Please join me in welcoming Shani. Thank you so much for this introduction. It's really honestly so great to be here with so many friends. You are my community, my people. So really a true honor. And um, a moment before we begin, I actually want you to also join me in thanking a bunch of people that I think really deserve some, some thanks. So first and foremost, can I please ask the Wikipedia and Education User Group leadership to stand up. Liana, <laughs> Philip, Joao, stand up. Zico and Susanna. They are the spirit and the visionaries be behind this 
conference. Philip mentioned it's been years in the making. Uh, it's true. He didn't lie there. <laughs> he never does, actually. Uh, but Philip, uh, and thanks to the work of Wikimedia Serbia, we were able to actually fulfill this. But before I thank them, I also want to acknowledge the Wikimedia Foundation staff members. And can I please ask you to stand up? Yael and Ben and everyone else from, and Sailesh and Melissa and Yop, right? They have been actually working around the clock in supporting the user group and Wikimedia Serbia in making this happen and beyond, which I'm sure you'll hear about a bit later on. Third, I actually want to thank another entity, important one in the movement, and that is the Wiki Education Foundation. So I'm asking Liana to stand up again and Frank. They have been important allies in reimagining the strategic work that we'll be doing uh, together throughout this weekend and in generally in inspiring our work globally and supporting us with the dashboard, etc. So thank you all. A, spe a special thank you, here it is, to Wikimedia Serbia. I want a huge round of applause and I want all the volunteers to stand up, please stand up. And lastly, I actually want to thank all of you because this conference, as was mentioned, is not going to be anything without the participation of each and every person sitting here. Um, and I actually want to continue for a second this rising up. And please stand up so we also get to know each other a bit better. If you're really new to the movement and have been doing EduWiki things for less than a year or sort of a year, do we have anything, anyone really new here? <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Thank you for being here. I hope next time we have a few more newcomers. Uh, I really do. Oh, wonderful. Stand up, please. And a third, oh, we have a four of them. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's great to have you and I think, you know, this is a good reminder that it's our job to help initiate the next generations and make sure that we are inclusive and welcoming to everyone. Stand up, please, if you have been doing this between one to five years now. Let's see how many of you are here. That is a long time, up to five years. The next group. Six to 10 years, people. Can you imagine doing this for a decade? I think they deserve more applause, but okay. And the last group, between 11 to 15 years. These are our veterans, the ones who showed us the way and who have inspired all of us. Do we have here someone, maybe, who's been doing it for more than 15 years? A smaller group, but you saw Philip there, and that was intentional because I really want to highlight our hosts again who have been actually doing it for over 15 years. It's crazy. They really started out, I think, Philip, it was 2005 that you started. Um, quite amazing. So kudos to all of you. And now, what do we have on the menu today? So I'm going to keep it quite simple because I think this keynote is more about all of us having a shared understanding and vision and a starting, sort of a plain starting ground to further discussions that we're going to have throughout this weekend together. So I'm going to divide it into two non-proportionally parts. 
One is going to be about the state of EduWiki from my perspective, which is a limiting one, and you're welcome to share more insights and add to this presentation when I'm done share some of our successes and celebrate them, but also talk about the challenges that we have, all leading to us discussing the futures and the specific opportunities that we have. So without further ado, let's jump into the first part, the present. So I wanted to start with these two inspirational quotes, one from Nelson Mandela and the second one from Kofi Annan, both of them discussing the power of education Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And Kofi Annan said that knowledge is power, information is liber liberating, and education is the premise of progress in every society and every family. Now, these words remind us the incredible impact that our collective effort can have in transforming lives, communities, and the world at large. As Wikimedians, you actually play an integral role in dissemination of free knowledge. You're, you've been fighting misinformation, disinformation, fake news, deep fake, vandalism, right? But also addressing knowledge gaps. All of that to empower learners from all different backgrounds. Your dedication and your passion are what makes this global movement possible and inspire me on a daily basis. So I commend each and every one of you for your invaluable contributions so far and for the contributions for the future of EduWiki that is going to happen hopefully this weekend. And with that, you know, we've been mentioning, oops, We've been mentioning EduWiki a lot, and I just wanted to touch base on what that actually means, because EduWiki means different things for different people. Historically, you've heard that some of us have been doing it since 2005, and there are some mentions of it even before, as early as 2002. I remember Andrew Lee talking about that and implementing it in one of his courses very, very early on. So EduWiki in terms of scope has been an umbrella of various activities from K to 12, right? Primary school through high school, etc., through college and university and including lifelong learning. And we've been quite diverse actually on this EduWiki spectrum in terms of the types of models that we implement into the curriculum. You see here that we've had wiki clubs and wiki camps, especially in Armenia, right? But not only in K-12. We've also engaged with offline Wikipedia through Kiwiks in areas in the world that don't have infrastructure. In higher education, we've had various types of engagement. The most prevalent, the most common use uh, has been done by many of you, I think, sitting here in the room, and that is using Wikipedia, and by the way, I use Wikipedia as a general name to all Wikimedia projects, as you see, you'll see um, very soon, but we've been using it as an alternative assessment. That means that we've been collaborating with different educators to give an assignment in, in a course that is related to Wikipedia or to other Wiki projects. You can see a picture here from the edgy wiki, um, the, the wiki ed um, program in the US and Canada. But we've also developed, as Liana mentioned, in 2000, since 2013, we actually have another model, which is a main assessment. So for credit, dedicated courses to Wikipedia or Wikidata that are running in various places in the world. These are my students in the um, Wikipedia and Wikidata uh, course at Tel Aviv University. Another model that has been very widely used actually in various places, including here in Serbia and Israel as well, is teachers' trainings. In these models, we actually collaborate with ministries of education or various formations of um, teachers that allow for credit accreditation for actually 
working with us. So that's another important one. In recent years, we've seen another model emerge, and that is Wikimedians in residence, which we've known for years in the glam sector, suddenly coming into the education sector. I think the first one was Ewan McAndrew at the University of Edinburgh. And since then, and this is their project of the witch hunts, if you don't know it, it's an amazing project to look at. And this is another model of collaborating with higher education institutions. And finally, as I mentioned, we go from K to 12 until lifelong learning with various countries and programs in the world, working with senior citizens training them as part of a lifelong learning effort to, to do education. So various models, these are probably not the only ones. It's important to say these are some highlights from the diversity of what it is that we do around the world. So quite different things. We've also, as I mentioned, are not focused only on Wikipedia. We have 13 sister projects altogether and Throughout the EduWiki, I counted last night nine. Now, I'm a tad jet-lagged, so I could have missed something, but you get the idea. We've been working with Wikipedia, with Wikicommons, in some countries with Wikiquote and Wikibooks and Wikiversity and Wikidata in recent years, etc., etc. So again, various models, various ways of engaging, all in order to create open educational resources and open knowledge for the rest of the world to be using. And some of you know that I really like to talk about education in the context of other outreach efforts. And we've been you know, using education in collaboration with other outreach efforts in our movement. So we've been collaborating through educational programs or initiatives with GLAM institutions. That means we can work at a university course with a museum or with a library, right? Or with governmental uh, or archival material like they've been doing extensively in Brazil and other places in the world. We've been collaborating with medical research institutions or um, sciences um, in STEM in general, working specifically on medical content, but not only in open science and open data. And we've been using education also to address the gender gap and other knowledge gaps. These are some of our Hebrew, you see here the Hebrew, but I'm sure that you, I have a sense that you recognize the logo from the women in red, even though it's in the weird right to left Hebrew. So these have been helping us to address DEI or EDI, as they say in, in the UK, right? I'm trying to be not US-centric too much. So diversity, equity, and inclusion, or equity, diversity, and inclusion, depending on where you come from the world. But it's the same idea. And we're not only doing outreach internally, right? Or collaborating within different uh, spectrums. We, we've actually been collaborating with external organizations like UNICEF and the World Health Organization as part of our, of our educational um, efforts. All of that means that we've accomplished something together, I think at least. So I wanna talk a bit about what that is and what I think we've accomplished so far. I'll start with internal things, right? Um, in terms of reach, you can see a map here of the different places in the world where we are present. This is based on information gathered by the user group, the Wikimedia Foundation education team, and also you people attending this conference. We know for sure, we don't know many things for sure, right? But we, we do know for sure that education has become one of the most prevalent, uh, one of the most common pro programmatic work area for any affiliates, entities working within the Wikimedia movement. That's amazing, right? Consider it for a second. But you can see here that we are engaging roughly, and I'm saying roughly because 
Tracking numbers is a bit tricky, as I'll talk about it a bit later on, but we know of roughly 90 countries or organizations that have been collaborating with us over the years. And we do know today that around 70% of all the grant money given by Wikimedia Foundation goes to educational programs and initiatives. That's, that's a wow. I didn't know that it, it got to 70, but that's quite amazing. And it is estimated that we spend as a movement around 5 million between us. It sounds like a lot of money, but when you think about the whole world, to me, that needs to grow. And we'll maybe discuss throughout this weekend how we can make that happen. And how did it come to be? Um, I think one of our strengths and one of our accomplishments that we need to celebrate is the fact that we're an actual community. It started very separately, individuals, grassroots efforts in various places in the world, but something happened in 2014. Actually, Liana and Frank happened. Uh, back then, they were working for the Wikimedia Foundation and Liana had the insight to actually say, hey, we need to gather all these people who are doing educational work and make sure that they are a united front and that they speak to each other, not only to me, right? Or that was Liana saying, not me. Um, and actually, I owe a lot to Liana because um, she, is the, she is the one who actually brought me in um, back then in, in Prague, recognizing that small me, back there in that tiny country called Israel is doing something that is worthwhile, maybe. So we met in Prague in 2004, and that was the kickoff of what was historically known as the collab, the educational collab, collaborative collab in short. We ended up meeting later on that year in Edinburgh, and then later in Stockholm, and in Yerevan. And yes, if you're noticing, you can see the thread of me picking up or hiding behind people because I hate to be photographed, as you can see from my red thread. So that was the beginning of our organizing. And I think we took a, an important step forward in 2018 when we actually moved from being in just a collab to an actual recognized affiliate, a user group. That was an important step. I don't know why it's pounding, but let me see if I can. Do that. Can you hear me well? Perfect. That means I can actually move. Yay. Um, so in 2018, we actually took a step forward by starting the collab. That was an important moment in time from where I uh, look at things, and maybe other people may have different views, but to me that was an important moment that actually distinguished us as a community from other communities in the Wikimedia world, like the GLAM community, that did not organize as an entity. And there's a difference in terms of the maturity of our community because of that, and the impact that we are able to have because of that. Now. This was our first conference. Galder should be here, right? But the Basque, yay! But the Basque community hosted in 2019 the first EduWiki conference. And here we are, finally four years after, because of the pandemic. It was supposed to be much earlier, um, as Philip was alluding before. Uh, sorry? Okay. Um, so we are here together finally after four years of not meeting and I'm going to talk a bit more later about this important moment in time, but I also need to highlight one more entity or stakeholder that I think has been tremendously important in making all of that happen. And that is the Wikimedia Education, um, the, the Wikimedia Foundation education team and the efforts that they have been doing behind the scenes and actually on the field as well to support, to encourage, to, 
do some things where there are no affiliates working and to help advance our mission together. So I think altogether, what happened is that we became a global community that is sustainable and is now celebrating over 10 years of, of joint work, right? Because we've been working separately even longer, but we've been working jointly for a decade now. And I think our resilience really shine, shone through, shone through, shine through, um, it's a weird, it's, a, it's, it's weird in V3, right? Sorry. Uh, a moment of a non-native speaker here. Um, I think the resilience of this community has really, um, it struck me when COVID hit because suddenly we were at a moment in time where you see the numbers, it's quite staggering, right? 1.6 billion students in 200 countries were suddenly out of school more so even out of university, etc. Yes, but education never stops, does it? Which is what makes our work so impactful as well. And we adapted and we innovate and we created new forms. And you can see a tiny fraction of the examples happening around the world during COVID. Another thing that is not on the slide but kept happening is that we continue to do research around this topic and publish papers despite the pandemic. And all of that helped us continue and push through and adapt to this new form of living. So that was a moment for us to actually celebrate our resilience as a community. Externally, I wanna talk a bit about what we've accomplished in terms of research. Wikipedia has been research, and again, Wikipedia as a general name for various, for quite diverse work around Wikimedia projects, although Wikipedia is the most prevalent and the most well-known one, <clears throat> has produced tons, tons of academic research. Um, and research shows us that collaborating with our programs, making sure that kids from K to 12 until very senior people, when they engage in actually not only consuming knowledge, but actually creating knowledge, some, something magical happens. They suddenly are able to improve different skills. They improve their digital literacy. They improve academic skills. They improve their collaborative skills. They learn social accountability and what it means to be impactful and give back to society, which in our world is quite amazing. And we talk a lot about references and provenance and critical thinking that is needed in our age. And in recent years with Wikidata, it has allowed us to address another need for data literacy, right? And by the way, it's not here on the slide because I still don't have a name for it, but I be believe that generative AI, which we will be discussing throughout this week and I'm sure, um, is requiring us to reevaluate and reassess and take care of an additional set of skills because it's creating another layer between knowledge and the actual people. So it's, again, it comes to us to teach the young generation what it actually means when they get an answer, not only from Siri or Alexa, which has been around for a long time, but now from BARD and ChatGPT. What about provenance? Where does that come from? And what about its ability to create absolutely bogus references that look really legit? Scary for all of us. To me, as an educator, that's an opportunity, and I'll touch that a bit later. But I do want to recognize that there is quite a lot of research happening showing us that from all of the Web2 platform that exist, all of the websites that allow communication between communities and users, Wikipedia is the best one to improve skills. Now, research has been helping us. It's quite a heavy slide, I know. Sorry about that. Um, but I did want to highlight that the engagement that we have with the research, the academic research community, has been quite important in 
leading us to a deeper, more sustainable support for the whole movement. First of all, we have several of our EduWiki leaders actually engaging in science themselves, producing academic papers, going to academic conferences, spreading the word. We've been collaborating with external uh, researchers that have been investigating our movement and you know, the fact that we suddenly have data through the dashboards, the various dashboards available to the public means that we have research happening without us even knowing and suddenly we get to know about it from papers that get published. We have, um, all of that has been helping us to, in a sense, legitimize the work of EduWiki across the world. And we've seen a shift in the past decade, right? From teachers and many people that are decision makers saying, oh my gosh, the students, don't use Wikipedia in the classroom. To a growing number of educators, schools, universities, research centers, policymakers, ministries of education, wanting to collaborate with us on a growing scale. It also encourages the development of technological tools and offers a new model for engaging with our movement because suddenly we have a model where we can show good editing, where the information is actually checked, sometimes by peer review and by university professors. So this, is a, this has become a massive important portal for people to join in our movement. And in terms of our impact, I can claim today that from my perspective, doing it for over a decade now, I believe education and other outreach efforts, but mainly education, has been one of the driving forces of new high quality content to our platforms. I think that fact that I know for sure, though I don't have any immediate numbers to showcase for it, demonstrate on the one hand our impact, but on the other, the work that we have still ahead of us. We need to get so much better in tracking what we do, measuring it on a larger scale, and we'll touch about that in a second. But what we do know for sure is that at least 10% of all newcomers to the movement come through editing programs of sorts. Actually, in the US alone, I think it comes to an 18%. 19%, Liana says. 19% of English Wikipedia. Can you grasp it? It's unbelievable. And we know that when teachers engage with us, good things happen as well. So it seems like a win-win. But that actually brings me to the challenges that we're all facing. We have some internal challenges that we will be trying to address this weekend. This is not a full list, again. I'm sure you can all come up with additional challenges, but these are some of the important ones that I wanted to highlight. First of all, despite the fact that we are a global community, I believe that from my perspective, we have been really struggling to strategically work together. We have had different entities in the movement doing amazing work but we have not been as organized and as strategic in thinking about that as we could have been. So that's one challenge that we are hoping to tackle. We are missing some much needed technological infrastructure to support our work. Actually, we've been very thankful to have the dashboard, but at no point, if you reflect back, were we as a movement sitting down and saying, hey, these are our needs. This is what we need as tools. And hey, let's think about the matrix of what, what is it that we actually want to measure? What does success look like? And the fact that we haven't done that, despite the fact that we've been active for a decade, means that it's an opportunity for us to improve. 
we've been actually missing, and we know that outside the education world, right? It's a wiki problem in general. We did not, we were unable as of now, I'm, I'm op cautiously optimistic that we'll fix it at some point, but as of now, we're missing a system to curate all of our global efforts in a really nice and easy way. So that when newcomers come in and want to know, hey, can you tell me um, what types of projects are happening around the world, around K to 12 um, or in universities that are targeting, I don't know, the gender gap, we will be able to answer that question. Right now, we really can't. It's kind of a word to mouth. You kind of need to be in this cabal of small communities, either on Facebook or on other places, or in Meta, or in these types of conferences to actually know what's happening. That's not sustainable. And we've been also missing resources for capacity buildings, because 90 countries, remember? You all know what that means. That means that we have some very strong chapters or affiliates doing this work, but we also have less less developed, less mature entities in the movement working. We actually have four people that are new here and where they want to start out or develop capacity in their own countries, where do they go? Right now, they can either go to the user group, they can go to the Wikimedia Foundation education team, but it's not organized enough. We don't have enough resources that are diverse and adaptable to the local needs. So we need to work on that. Externally, we also lack awareness in like-minded organizations and decision makers to the impact of what we do. Not many people, many people, all, almost everyone use Wikipedia, but very little, as ma many of you know, very little actually know how it works behind the scenes not to mention what it means to actually implement it in education. So we need to be talking to decision makers and we need to be talking to ministries of education and to universities and they need to know about what we're doing and to understand how this is the perfect platform to implement some of their goals. We also have lack of recognition from like-minded organizations. You spoke about open educational resources. And I would say that we are part of the open education community, but that community rarely recognizes Wikipedia or the Wikimedia efforts in general as part of it. It's so weird to me, really, it, it is. It just means that we, are, we have a gap of education that needs to happen throughout, throughout the rest of the world. And I mentioned the OECD just because I've just, uh, you know, earlier this week I've been to Paris and I was invited to give a sort of a keynote, right, uh, to participate in a panel of experts that the OECD has initiated because they've, um, they're starting a new network called Schools Plus. And to my amazement, honestly, they have framed our work, they brought us in as an example of wisdom of the crowd, but something outside of education. I'll let that sink in for a second. Us as outside of education. To me, that is such a huge, deep gap that needs to be filled that I ended up spending the two days that I had there trying to fill that gap in and trying to make sure that people understand that, hey, we're absolutely part of education. It's crazy to think of us as outside of education. What we do is education at its best and we need more people to know about it. Finally, generative AI. Now, this is a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. It's a challenge, first of all, because it requires us to do a new type of educating the audience, right? Of making sure digital citizens that are out there understand some of the things about Gen AI today. Actually, we're better positioned 
to explain that probably than anyone else. Because Gen AI is based on Wikipedia. So to me, the opportunity lies in the fact that actually when you contribute through educational programs to Wikimedia projects, you're actually making improve the world in general, but specifically you're making AI much better because that is all the answers that it gives are based on us. And hey, we're the good guys on the internet, right? But we're flawed. We have misinformation and disinformation and a bunch of missing information. And if they're using us and a bunch of other misinformation out there, you can imagine where that comes from. So we're working on that as well. And I think that's a good place for us to step up and actually discuss what that new literacy needs to be of provenance, of understanding, hey, give me the reference to where that comes from so I can actually judge. That brings me to the future. When I talk about challenges, it's always connected to actual opportunities. And I want to recognize this moment in time as a unique moment in time. As I mentioned before, as a movement, as a community of educators who are doing Wikimedia projects, we have been working tirelessly over the past decade. Partly we've been trying to join forces, but again, in a limited way. I want to recognize this moment in time where, from where I stand, it seems like the stars have all aligned now for us to be sitting here in this room in Serbia to be doing this work. It couldn't have happened a year ago or two years ago or five years ago. It can only happen now for various reasons that this keynote is too short to discuss. But trust me when I tell you that the moment of opportunity is now such that this is our moment. This is our moment to together think about all of that. We need to decide on a strategy. And for that, we need all of you to recognize that we're stronger together, right? We are all been doing our own thing in our local countries, but we do have global needs. We should have a global strategic agenda and we should be driving towards it. And part of this weekend, as Liana is gonna explore later on, is gonna be discussing what the right structure is to do it. Do we need a hub for education? Maybe another structure? That's for all of us to decide together. And as I mentioned, our work has never been so important as it is now in fighting this misinformation, misinformation, disinformation, and missing information, fighting systemic bias, and fighting for actual diversity, equity, and inclusion, including inside generative AI, which is disrupting and changing the world. And what we want is for this work to be grounded in our strategic direction because we already have a strategy for the movement that we've decided upon, right? We do. We have 10 recommendations and yeah, I have a clicker. And uh, as you can see, although education is not specifically mentioned in the recommendations, it can't be because the recommendations are high level. Education I am arguing here today with you is the perfect platform to actually realize some of our strategic goal for 2030. I want to specifically highlight that we're in the best position to actually identify topics that may have impact and closing specific gaps because we can, uh, we can collaborate with specific university courses and tackle or invite specific crowds to work with us. It's a way for us to provide inclusion and also a way for us to show what it really means to have equity in decision-making. And this is a good moment to recognize that, yes, it's quite amazing that a hundred of us were able to come from so many places in the world to talk throughout this weekend and make decisions together. But I want to recognize the hundreds, if not thousands of people 
that are back home and weren't able to come here. And we want to include in this process. So whatever we do here this weekend is only going to inform a much larger discussion. And I'm so happy that the user group and everyone involved in spearheading these strategic discussions are so aware of it and planning and building towards that inclusion. So I hope in wrapping up, I hope that we are now aligned that what we're here to do this weekend is actually discuss the future of EduWiki, making sure that we are working strategically and collaboratively with various entities to actually address some of the issues that were mentioned. And in the meantime, one thing is very clear to me that I want to highlight is that every single person sitting here is part of this. I really hope that you understand that as, individual, as individuals who are leading different programs that are successful on your local countries, you have a role to play in this global network. And we are stronger together. The success that we've had as the Wikimedia movement comes from the scale that we work in. And while you continue to do your local work, I encourage you that it's worth addressing our global needs and the big picture. So, you know, a few years ago, I think it was Ezin Olario, and I gave a talk that I, I called Imagine a World Where Every University and Every School Have a Wiki Program. I still believe in that vision. I still think it's great. And we're very, very far from there. So I want to end basically with this inspirational proverb based on Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, who wrote The Little Prince that many of you know. And that proverb says, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men and women to gather wood to divide the work and to give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. I think we've all been building small ships, each in our local um, countries we've been yearning, but it's time that we join forces and build an international fleet of ships. And how will it look like? Well, maybe like this. This was actually generated by Leonardo AI. I asked it to, to give me a picture of the Wikipedia logo in a futuristic way. That's how it envisioned it. We might envision it differently, Really, no one knows, but it's for us to determine. And as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, may she rest in peace, said, real change, enduring change, comes one step at a time. So we invite you all to take this one step with us this weekend. And um, I hope that you are as bold as Wikipedians can be, as creative, as innovating as you can be and that we will be also fearless in addressing any elephant in the room that might hinder us from progressing together forward. So thank you all for listening. And let's discuss. Do we have time for questions? We don't have time for questions, so we'll carry on. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, so I respect I am what is standing between you and a break. And so I will try to be very uh, quick with my introduction and overview of the program here. Um, so I wanted to walk everyone through. I will take the clicker so I can actually advance my slides. Um, I wanted to walk you through sort of how we have designed the program today and talk a little bit about some of the sessions that Shani mentioned in her keynote where we are trying to determine the future of Wikimedia and education together um, here at the conference. 
So there's three general tracks for the program. The first track is sharing, doing, and learning. The second track is determining the future of Wikimedia and education. And the third track is connecting with others. The sharing, doing, and learning track. Um, these are sessions mostly here in the atrium and over there in the forum room. Almost all of these are recorded, and so if you are in one session but you would like to listen to the recording of another session, you can later after the conference. Um, these are all led by you, fellow participants in the conference, and they're a mixture of lightning talks, global trend section, sessions, hands-on workshops, and a great panel discussion that I'm certainly looking forward to on Sunday, and I think many of you, many of you are as well, on generative AI's impact on Wikimedia and education. The sharing, doing, and learning section sessions are the ones in the program in green and red. Um, so this is the web view, but you will also see that on mobile as well. I encourage you to look at the mobile um, page on Meta for the most latest program. It had changes as of this morning. Um, and then let me talk about the future of Wikimedia and education track, because this is a really important one that I want to make sure everyone here understands and is encouraged to and feels able to participate in. Um, so there will be a panel discussion Saturday tomorrow morning, um, as well as sessions in the Belgrade room, which is the workshop room over there. Um, these are all, these will not be recorded, and so these are all designed to be interactive workshops for those of us physically here in Belgrade. They have been designed in collaboration with the Wikimedia and Education User Group, the Wiki Education Foundation, and the Wikimedia Foundation. So there's a whole group of us who have been working on this track for a long time. And it is a participatory opportunity for you, that means the person who is listening to me right now, to help shape the future of the Wikimedia and Education corner of our movement. And so um, if there's one message you take away from my talk here, it's that I want you to participate in this section. So there, it's part of a larger research project that Wiki Education is facilitating with collaboration from the EduWiki User Group and the Wikimedia Foundation's education team to see if an education hub would be beneficial for our movement. I want to be super clear about this. This is not predetermined that we are creating a hub. This is an exploratory research project to see if a hub is the right answer. And um, this is in contrast to some others in our movement who have set out to sort of do a hub research project to identify the needs for their hub with the idea already in place that they will create a hub. We are interested in figuring out how can we identify what our collective vision is, how can we see what our needs are as an education movement, and then figure out the right answer to that. And a hub may be the answer, but it is not necessarily the answer. Um, so because of that, we're trying to identify the why and the what and not the how. Um, so this is super important. I want you to, I know we as Wikimedians all tend to immediately go into the details of, oh, how would this work and what would my affiliate's role be and can I be on the governance structure and that is not what we are talking about. Um, I want you all to try to bring your conversations back up to the higher level of the why. Why are we doing this? What is the vision of this and the what? What needs are we trying to, uh, to meet? Where, what needs do you have as a program that are the same needs as others in this space and how can we collectively address those together? And let me reiterate here, we strongly encourage at least one person from each education program to participate. So if you are the only one from your program here, that means you. Um, if there are several of you from your particular education program, different ones of you can participate or, um, or whoever is most interested can participate in the whole track, but I strongly encourage participation from at least one person from each program. Um, these are typically the blue sections here and the Belgrade track, and I want to highlight a few sessions in particular. The first one is the session today. It's led by me, um, and the goals of this session are to set a common definition for Wikimedia and education. So Shani talked about the breadth of different programmatic offerings that go under the education umbrella, um, but there's a lot of different ways of describing what Wikimedia and education is. We'll set a common 
common vi uh, common definition for sort of what that is that can help us move forward. And then we'll set a picture of what is our vision for the future of where do we want to go as um, as a Wikimedia and education movement. Um, there are two of these sessions. The way this has been designed, you should only attend one of them. There's the first session, and then it repeats again because there's obviously great sec sessions going on in the other two rooms during them, and you might be presenting in one of them. So we wanted to give an opportunity for everyone to participate in these sessions. So come to the first one if you can. If not, come to the second one, but don't come to both. Um, the content will be the same in, um, in both sessions. Tomorrow, Saturday, Cornelius, stand up, please. I think most of you know Cornelius. If you don't know Cornelius, a longtime Wikimedian, he is leading this research project for us, and he will be working to do a needs finding session on Saturday. The goals of this session are to help identify formal or informal movement resources that program leaders are currently reliant on. So this is the point of this is we want to make sure as we move to the future, if you're using something or you're getting value from something currently, we don't want that to go away. Um, so we want to make sure we're capturing what is important that's already being used from people. And then secondly, identifying needs currently not being met. So what needs do we as a movement of Wikimedia and education have that are not currently being met by any of the diverse structures providing support for the education team? Again, similar to today's sessions, there are two. You only need to attend one. Um, you should not attend both. The content will be the same in both sessions. And then on Sunday, Ben and Yope, can you, Ben and Yope, can you guys stand up? There's Ben, there's Yope, our wonderful friends from the Wikimedia Foundation. They will be leading a spectrogram of EduWiki Futures. Um, because of the program, the way it w works on Sunday with the shorter day, there will only be one of these sessions. Um, so if you want to participate in this one, you should definitely go to this session. Um, and the goal of this is to explore on our feet, so there will be movement in this session, uh, a range of possible futures for Wikimedia and education, considering technological trends, regional contexts, and personal visions for success and to increase understanding of the diverse views and perspectives held across our community of practice and to discover again on our feet where consensus feels easy and where it feels hard. And um, so again, I'd encourage you to participate. I think this one will be particularly fun. Um, it's guaranteed fun. In fact, as the slide says, um, I will sadly be presenting in a different room at the time, but otherwise I would be there. And so I encourage you to be there too if you're not coming to one of the other sessions. Um, and then the connecting with others session. And so these are um, also in the blue on the program and there's a few of them spread throughout. There's three of them. And these are open informal opportunities for you to network with other people at the conference. Um, so these will also be in the Belgrade room. These are completely unstructured and unfacilitated. So the idea behind these is each, there's a bunch of tables in the Belgrade room. Each table could be sort of for the regional one, it could be a different region or for the cross-pollination one, which is education in GLAM, or education in libraries, or education in medicine, or whichever things that you come up with. It's an opportunity for you to network and collaborate with others who are doing similar work in either your same region, or are also doing work in education and GLAM crossovers. Um, or then the third session is a type of program. So everyone who's working in higher education can sit at a table, or everyone who's working with senior citizen programs, or everyone who's working with primary or secondary or doing reading Wikipedia in the classroom. Um, these are opportunities to just have informal conversations where we're helping you identify the other people who are doing something similar or who are in the same region as you. Um, so I encourage you to if you're interested in just having sort of open discussions with others in the movement who are in your area, I encourage you to participate in, in these um, three sessions. Okay, I am now over time by five minutes, so I apologize for that. Um, we've also built in breaks along the way, so there's a 30 minute break now. Each of the breaks during the day are 30 minutes and lunch is one hour and a half. Um, and the design of that is it'll be plenty of opportunity for you to mix and mingle and make new friends. So with that, I will move us directly into the break and skip questions. Thank you everyone.
can I ask you to come back to uh, at 11 so we can, you know, respect the timeline and be uh, right on time with all of the sessions. Thank you. So feel free to to have a break. <laughs>